I'm here to, uh, today with uh, Craig Danby, a uh, Craig I've known for many, many years, a long-time competitor of both Robot Wars and BattleBots. And uh, hello, Craig. Howdy. How's it going? It's going great. How, how's it going with you? It's hot. It's very hot. Uh, I'm not used to America just yet. <laughs> All right, you've been here how many years now? Uh, about three and a half, nearly four, I guess. Well, I can't Something say like that. Yeah. I can't say anything. It's been, what, uh, 17 and a half? I mean, I'm still not used to it. No, so. I'll never get used to it. it, it, it it's bad. It's, you know, it's hot, it's humid. And for those who don't understand in Britain stuff, it's like that feeling when you walk into a hot swimming baths in the middle, you know, that kind of sweaty feeling of the, the hot humidity. You walk out of the changing room into the, into the bath area and it's into the swimming baths. It's all hot and humid around you and everything. And it's it's like that it's like every, it's like that just with everything turned up just a little bit more. So we can I, I my job I, I work outside welding and grinding sometimes, and I went outside this morning and I went in early so that I could do it. And I went outside at seven thirty in the morning and it was sixty seven percent humidity. And my I took a screenshot of it and my phone said dangerous humidity level. I was like, wow, I didn't know humidity <laughs> could be dangerous, but okay. For a phone, yeah. <laughs> Wait until you went to have you had the road steaming yet? Uh, yes, uh, I think I think it's just cooled off enough to stop. We had a storm come through earlier and then the roads were steaming and yeah, it's, it's like driving weird. through fog. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Yeah, <laughs> we never thought, you know. So, for those who don't know, I've known Craig now for say what at least 20 years now 21, 22 years, yeah, not now since probably. about 99. And, um, yeah, that's when, I was, right. when I was doing my research, because, you know, I'm a proper person at doing this, um, and I, I, I went and looked back over, over some things, some history, and uh, I went and looked back at your first uh, robot. Um, oh, what was it called? Toxin. Yes. And um, I, I, I remembered something I was told many, many years ago as to what it was originally designed to be and who it was originally designed to go against. And it was designed to be a middleweight, wasn't it, originally? It was. And it was. who exactly it was... was it supposed to go against? Uh, you, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, jeez, yes. <laughs> well, we, we started designing it in, like, when series one was on air. So mm -hmm. we would have been designing it in and around the time the hard cheese was being built as well, but we missed the, uh, let's just say we missed the middleweight division weight limit by quite a bit, by like, uh, double, I think, when we went to the auditions as they were back then. Yeah, it was um, 97 yeah. kilos. Yeah, 97 point something kilos and didn't have any armor. Uh, nice. So uh, yeah, we, we, missed the, we missed that by quite a long way yeah double yeah and well, meanwhile hard cheese was i think 31 kilos we were way under <laughs> wow so we were triple your weight amazing yeah. well then it, you weren't close to kill a lot and they, look at what they tried to do you know, to us. uh yeah <laughs> yeah people still don't believe me when, when people when they go oh, it was only 200 kilos it wasn't there's 680, no I think, when, when they sat on top of us in season three, it was 680 kilos because it busted the motor mounts. I just, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's it, it a long time. You know, we've known each other a long time. We had those um, lovely events, the Debenham, where you did the, the ant weight. And we were both very young back then, our teens and 20s, early 20s at the time. And yeah. Uh, Newark Kit Car Festival. Newark Kit Car Festival. That was, oh, that takes us back. The, the, the playing the football with that big uh, welded football in that, in that uh, yes. hay bale and, and scaffolding arena. Wasn't it? Was, that, <laughs> you look back at, the, at what we used to do for the, for the live event stuff like that and you cringe a little bit. As I, I couldn't bring... I couldn't bring Slammo to one of those events. It would just bust straight through everything. Well, but, yeah, uh, now, but compared to then, I mean, we were doing... What, what's Slammo got in the way of drive now? What kind of wattage are we talking? Uh, it's probably in around 15,000 watts. Right, back then... And a half kilowatts each side. So, and that's roughly 10 times what we had back then. 
you know, yeah. maybe 750 watt at one horsepower per side rather than 10 horsepower per side. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, that's, that's quite the difference. You know, people, keep, we've seen recently, you know, people keep going who from the classic era, you know, 10, 20 years ago would, would stand up against the ones these days. And it's nobody. No, no. It's just, Every time any, there's one that came up today for Robot Wars, it's like, do you think somebody like Chaos 2 or Razor would do well in modern combat? Or No, no, they wouldn't. They were 20 kilos lighter than the, the current crop of bots. They were uh, massively underpowered. Uh, Chaos 2 flipper would barely work nowadays. It wouldn't be legal on no, battle bots. No, so, because CO2, yeah. 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 So, it's, yeah. It's, People just don't seem to understand that sort of thing, or, or of course, everybody goes for the big um, one of the few. Well, the bots you uh, dis, uh, defeated early on, which was Hypnodisc. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't much uh, of a fight, but yeah, I've been I've been and had those myself. Um, but you know, it, they say it was so destructive and so damaging. But as we both know, that arena back then was just it was tissue paper almost. It was nothing with a with a strong weapon was not allowed. You know. You had, um, was it one of yours? Was your early ones was Apex? Yeah, somebody, yeah, Apex is a, is a more recent one. Okay, um, I know you had a, an earlier one which was a, still a little too dangerous. Was it, um, was it an early Tanto perhaps had the, had the, uh, yes, uh, an early Tanto broke the arena wall. Yeah, uh, we had e tech, uh, two e techs, one on each side for drive, and we put a, we put a robot in the qualifying fights into the wall and then the wall went all the way down and so did they and I just kind of just about managed to reverse back out of it but uh yeah we we busted straight through the wall so uh yeah yeah those, those are they just people just don't get how weak the arenas were back then I mean compared to the modern day battle bots arenas what an inch and a half thick at least at least yeah, I think you stand by the test box and it really, really, it really is like that thick. And, uh, you know, you could be next to the text, test box. You would want to be with someone like Gigabyte or Tombstone spinning full tilt, feeling relatively comfortable that if it were to go out of control and hit the leg hand, that that leg hand ain't going nowhere because it's, it's this thick. Uh, I still wouldn't like to test that theory, but... Uh, I've been yeah, there. It's I, not, it's not fun. Probably... It's not fun. <laughs> I had that happen with um, Mechavore, if you remember, about 20 years ago. Went right through. But uh, back then, in those old days of the Hypnodisc era, we were talking about a quarter of even then. So, what, an, uh, an eighth of, of what it is now? You know, six million? Yeah. Uh, so, those, those old bots just uh, had no clue. Yeah, I think, I think the, the, the first arena was six million. The million, last series had 10 millimeters. Yeah. But yeah, I think the early arenas were definitely at least six millimeters, and um, yeah, wooden floors. They kept saying, "Oh, the floor is like this thick." It's like, yeah, but deep six went through. You know, was it two or three layers of quarter inch? Yeah, uh, like it was nothing. So uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this 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 development of of, of bots, it's got, become um, less of a, a back shed, you know, shed in the back of the garden sort of game, and more into a a precision engineered big money yeah, sort of yeah. thing. I mean, you had a, a sponsorship deal with um, Mobot last year. I did. And um, that, that was, a, you know, I'm sure that that sponsorship came in handy just because of the sheer cost of robots these days. I mean, the... we, we built three identical fully working robots. So at, at this point last year, when the, the crate was about to leave um, for, the, for the event, we had three complete robots all all with their own spares all fully built and stuff like that and uh, i remember dreaming about that kind of thing when i was in my sort of mid-20s it'd be great to go to somewhere like robo games and you have just two complete spare robots and yeah and it's, it's taken a long time that's a lot of money to do that kind of thing and it takes it takes a lot of it takes a lot of money to do that kind of thing but it also takes the, the time to physically manufacture absolutely oh, yeah. everything and um i think people f sometimes don't realize that you don't just build a robot you build a robot six or seven times you maybe don't necessarily you maybe build one one complete and then have all the bits to remake it but 
yeah, it's a, it's a big, it's a very different world from how it was. Uh, the original run of Robot Wars, uh, you turn up with a robot and maybe some spares if you had them, probably a spare set of batteries, and um, you throw everything in as best you could, and uh, it would come out and something would be damaged, and you'd fix it, and uh, yeah, but uh, it's almost to the point of disposable parts of the robot. Last year we blew we blew uh, a five hundred dollar Vex Victor BB. Mm-hmm. And if I'd have blown that in Series 7 of Robot Wars, that would have been almost the entire cost of the robot that I was going to have to throw away. But I just went, no, oh, fuck it, and threw it away. <laughs> and like, that's, that's crazy. Like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I could never have imagined him doing that. But c'est la vie. Well, yeah, it's just, yeah, people don't realize just how much it's come along and how much it's, it's developed like a sport. It's now less of a, a backyard pursuit or a, a new at kick car sort of event that's more a this is serious yeah yeah something like um motorama that happens most years which is kind of like a kick car festival type thing that they they got lots of stuff going on as well but even turning up with with a 30 pounder now is they would beat the 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 100 kilo the heavyweight box from from back in the day so yeah, that's uh, yeah. Um, we we go a little easier here in Atlanta. You know, we've got the robot battles. But the thirty pounders are more of a sumo setup, but uh, yeah, that's often quite interesting and fun. Um, and you say the dangerous stuff. I'm the one often the cameraman left running and dodging the bots as they come flying towards me. Even then, can't leave it. Can't leave it behind. You just like having robots thrown at you. I think. Oh yes. I gotta have some sort of danger at some point. You know, I don't I don't build the bots anymore, unfortunately, but I always found running the events was more fun. Unusual for some people I know, but I've done, I've been on both sides. I'm quite happy with the building and uh, the competing side right now. Um, like that might change, but we'll see. I I just found it was too much hurry up and wait. I mean Back in my uh, like Robot Wars season three, four, five, it was sort of okay. Hurry up, get to the line, and then just stand there bored for ten minutes, twenty minutes, an hour, three hours, and then I'm missing out on everything. You know, for an event, I get yeah. to stand at the arena, so I get to see every match, or I get to see every bot getting worked on in the pits, as if I remember in the pits that time. And you know, I get to see everything that goes on. I'm not just stuck waiting and looking at my own bot. And fearing my own work is not good enough. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I see your point. Uh, yeah, no, I've definitely, I've definitely felt that. There was a lot of hurry up and wait, in, particularly last year. Um, we were almost always the first or last fight of the day, depending on how well the day had run. Um, so uh, I remember we had to get ready for uh, Black Dragon, and we had to be at the arena side by 10 a.m. And we didn't actually fight until about four o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, I, I feel you. Yeah. And you, you miss now because you can't really go anywhere. Yeah. Well, it was very different at, at the last battle box because we were, we, the entire time that we were waiting, we could be in the opera boxes. So we were literally arena side looking in at everything. Uh, but that is that's not the not a usual thing. So that's a that's a COVID usually, sort of thing. You know, it's like yes, it's it's definitely a COVID situation rather than rather than the norm. And I don't think we're doing that this year either. So we'll see. Yeah, they're they're selling out those, those VIP boxes. I mean, that's that's it should be interesting to see how it how it happens this time. I mean, but are you hoping for better editing for your fights at least this time? Personally, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, but I, I decided rather than uh, allowing somebody else to create my own fate that I would uh, would do everything in my power to do my absolute best and to dominate the fights and uh, so that my interviews afterwards particularly can be a bit more uh, forgiving. I mean, at least they haven't given you nicknames like Dirty Derek, you know, like, you know, they do with Derek, yeah. I'll I'll work on it. Maybe I can I see what nickname I can get myself. Um, no, no. Killer Craig. No, I've, I've I've had yeah. Let's go with that one. Or Combat um, Craig. Go with the because you used to do yeah. martial arts, didn't you? 
Uh, to a little bit, yeah. Uh, rugby became my thing when I went to university and I ended up, uh, but so I've kind of always been in full contact sports of some kind, but yeah, uh, did jiu-jitsu, uh, which that's I don't it. like to mention in front of uh, uh, Kenny Florian because that's uh, exactly what he's the master of. So I'm just going to let him have it. I'm just going to ignore the fact that I used to do a bit of it, you know. Yeah, but still, I mean, you, 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 were, I mean, you could certainly handle yourself. You, you could be combat Craig. There, there you go. Uh, it, we'll see. We'll see. I don't think uh, I think Red is going to go for that, but well, no. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try. I've just got to. I've got managed to get them to forget about the fox for an, for a while. So this is going to be your uh, fourth, all right? Fourth battle bots, right? Yep. Yeah. And so yeah. that, it's which do you prefer? Would you say? Do you prefer the battle bot style? Or do you prefer the robot war style? Uh, battle bots almost certainly um robot wars so if i had to give a preference it would be uh i do battle bots uh then old robot wars and then uh new robot wars new robot wars was a very different animal it wasn't it was it was more of a tv show with robots than it was a robot show so um robot wars back in the day was a tv show about robots yeah, and it was about a competition, and it centered around the competition. And you could say that they rigged fights for certain bots to do better than others, which every show does. Even BattleBots does it. Um, but uh, the new series was very, very different. And uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, if I could do, if I only could do one of those two, I'd do Old Robot Wars. But yeah. if I had to choose between all of them, I'd take BattleBots all day, every day. And so there's there's two very different styles of of um of combat. I mean, the there's the battle watch, which is very kinetic energy heavy, and then there's robot wars, which is always very um, flipper heavy and control heavy. And you certainly seem to uh, bias more towards the control style of bot. It's because it, it, it like the whole live circuit when everybody in England was building flippers, I built a rambot. And now that I'm in America and everybody builds uh, vertical spinners and horizontal spinners, I'll build a control bot. So if, if the meta goes my way and everybody has like a horizontal or everybody has like a control bot, I'll get bored of that and I'll do something else. I'll do a crusher. I'll do something completely different. So uh, I always tend to like, if the meta is going this way, then there'll be the, be me diverging in a completely different way. Uh, you, you can tell it's, it's worked by the, the, the wall of trophies that I have. <laughs> uh, which is none <laughs> but um i just the way i always kind of like to try and take things a little differently um so uh yeah <laughs> one day it might work it hasn't yet but one day it might work well you, you never know i mean you there's always that lucky hit you know that that lucky <laughs> control and look at look at bombshell i mean they they took out uh some big names and became a surprise number two one year they did. They did. It's a terrific season. Uh, I remember speaking to Mike all the way through the filming, and he was like, "Hey, we we just beat so and so. We just beat Minotaur. We just beat I was like, what? How?" And I was like, I, "He's like, I don't know. It, it, we got lucky." And I was like, "Cool, amazing, fantastic. Uh, I hope I start getting some of that luck, and I never have. So one day, you never know. You never know. Uh, but uh, that is that is that going to be this year coming up? I mean, you have been." Um leaking some pictures of uh, yourself and uh, some of the bombshell team, Julie and uh, Randy and, and all of those? Uh, not this year. So I kind of, it was 2019 and we were, we were packing up the crates and stuff. And I've always gotten on really well with the, with the bombshell guys. Uh, mostly originally through Mike. Mike was like, hey, this is Craig. Blah, blah, blah. And we just hang out and drink. Um, and they, they were basically drinking buddies. And then uh, at the end of 2019, as we're packing up crates, um, Randy and Jason were like, hey, you know, we don't know that we're coming back next year at the moment. So maybe maybe we, we can join you. You seem like good guys to come hang out with, being himself and my brother. So I was like, yeah, sure. And then we went to Orlando, Robot Ruckus down in Orlando. Mm -hmm and uh took the new robot and they were both there with bombshell doing a, a talk down there and i was like hey 
so what do you think you want to come join me and they're like ah, all right then and um 2020 uh jason couldn't come along because of covid randy did come along and um they uh they were very much they were very involved randy randy is the bot medic like if anything is broken yeah. randy can fix it yeah and he is, if anybody yeah. is hurt he can you know he, he can fix it he's a scout he, master. he's a man so um <laughs> But Jason, he's the scoutmaster. He's he's our bot medic. He's the one that can fix absolutely anything. Um, I literally go, hey, here, go fix this. And 10 minutes later, he's back. He goes, right, what else is there? And he just doesn't like to sit still. And then uh, Jason is like the supreme electronics, electrical guy. He fixed all of our electronics issues to the point where I'm still running the same wiring loom that he made last year in the new robot. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then managed to con Mike into being part of a virtual pit crew. So I had Mike Jeffries and some other people uh, helping us out um, from afar. And it kind of came at a time when he was trying to think about coming back to building bots himself. So um, kind of all came together. And then for the new bot, um, I designed it. I was like, this is what I want to do. And then Mike was like, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> I was like, okay, I go back and fix it. I was like, how about this? And he's like, no, that's terrible. Go back to where it was before. And so go the other way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, they've had a lot of Randy, Jason, and, and Mike um, have had a lot of input into um, how the bot is going to work this year. And um, we, it, you know, I sneakily, sneakily saved it as, as Project Bombshell like 2021. Uh, in in my shared folder, and um, it kind of it kind of has taken more of a bombshelly stance, but mm -hmm. it's not bombshell. Uh, we did discuss whether we were going to try and get bombshell running um, as a potential uh, bounty uh, for uh, the new season, but uh, decided against it. And we are running a new version of Slam for the new season, but. Uh, and just getting a bit of uh, vengeance on some fans who were on platforms who will remain nameless and were like not very kind to me. So I've not been very kind to them and not shown them anything. And go, hey, I'm bringing bombshells. Like, oh, by the way, it's not bombshell. So, and on that bombshell, yes, and on that bombshell. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I know she didn't call me to help with your virtual team, though. <laughs> I didn't know you were around. I'm always around and about. I'm always happy to hear from you as well, Craig. You know, you got good people with Mike, Randy, and Jason, and of course, yeah, Julie. I mean, I, the, and yeah, I had the the whole virtual team last year. I had uh, uh, Curtis from uh, ThingTech Robotics, uh, Tim uh, Bowens, who's got a robot this year called Om Omnius, Omnius, and um, he's I've known him for almost the same amount of time that I've known you. I think we met kind of almost as you left. Uh, so I've been friends with him for years and years and years. And I also had Daniel Freitas. So I had a fairly good team with me. So, and half of them are turning up with their own bots this year, which is also terrifying, but you know. Well, look how well that turned out for the MIT kids, you know? And the team just goes yeah. and splits out and everywhere. The band break up. Um, sometimes the the the... the original is outclassed by the new let's hope that's not the case this time though um so what do you think of the new changes for this year the shelf for instance yeah uh i know they wanted to do so they've made the arena safer by putting it like they've kind of put like a sneeze guard all the way around to stop bots from being able to get out of the arena um, which didn't help control bots like me. So they've added this thing called the shelf. I think it would be better if it was in the corners rather than taking up the entire middle of the back wall. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, it's, um, it's different. <laughs> um, I guess it's a kind of wait and see. For somebody like me, somebody like, uh, who's got a control bot, Theoretically, it's right. It should be right, right for me. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I would have preferred the arena either be left how it was, or 
basically put some corners in so I could throw somebody out of a corner, say. Um, even in just one corner and just have that target. Um, but uh, uh, we'll wait and see. I'll hold off judgment for now. Oh, well, you never know. You know. We'll see how well it does. Because as we both know, the, the, the trick when it comes to driving is the trick of driving. You know, it, uh, yeah. you, you never know until you're actually there and trying to drive it yourself and there and then at that moment. Yeah, we got a fair amount of practice in. Uh, so hopefully uh, the drive is going to do what I want it to. So uh, fingers crossed, uh, I can get somebody where I want them to go. Uh, but uh, the, the shelf currently is, is in the plans for certain robots and then not for others. So we'll see. We could always hope and you know see see how well it goes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, is your brother joining you this time, or is he still? So it depends on what they allow in terms of COVID travel. So he's fully vaccinated. He's got all of his documentation to say that he can come. So he's got his flights currently. Mm -hmm. uh, they keep changing his flight, but he <laughs> has flights. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so the plan is for him to be there, but uh, whether he actually makes it or not is still a little bit up in the air. Um, the NIE waiver, they've got to, be, got to get from BattleBots and they haven't got yet. Not just my brother, but I think all of the, uh, all of the uh, foreign teams haven't got one yet. So uh, leaving it a little bit late, but it's fine, I'm sure. Uh, all those foreign teams, which are the ones you're, you're most looking forward to seeing? And which one do you least looking forward to seeing? Uh, I hate, absolutely hate with a passion, multibot. Uh, so um, I don't know if there's, there was Crash and Burn was coming, I think. I don't think he is now. Uh, last year, there was a bot called Jaeger, which is a three-part uh, multibot. And my problem with multibots is I always underestimate. <laughs> and... Uh, I was like, oh, it's, it's, it only weighs 30 kilos. I'll just plow straight through it. And I don't. It's a middleweight. Plow straight through me. It's like, I just go and beat up a middleweight. And it's like, it's not the same thing. It's not. They hit pretty hard. Um, I remember seeing some of the damage that Gemini did to somebody once at uh, Mammoth. When he ate, Gemini ate Mammoth. I was like, how? How did that happen? Like, you thought you'd have thought they would have walked over it, but it didn't. So, um, yeah. Um, I don't know if who's coming, who's not coming uh, with like that kind of situation, but yeah. uh, definitely looking forward to seeing uh, my boys with the, with the Minotaur, mm -hmm. uh, good friends with Junior and, uh, and Daniel. So uh, hopefully they, uh, they make it through quarantine just fine. I know Junior's already here. So worst case, Junior's running the robot by himself. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And, and and that's something else as well that, that people don't get, as you say, the good friends and stuff. Everybody is really good friends at at battle books, you know, at at the events. It's it's they just don't get. It's it's hard to explain to a lot of people a lot of the time. It it, it is a really really strange thing to try and explain. It's like we spend uh, two weeks beating the crap out of each other um, in the in like the morning and afternoon, and then in the evening when we're all done, we're all sat at the same bar buying each other drinks uh talking crap and uh, some of the stories from those nights i, I tell you man oh, they nice. would uh, they'd wake up they'd wake up a few people and it's going to be in vegas this time as well which is even worse it's, it's going to be terrible it's also my birthday while we're out there for vegas so it's going to be interesting so um oh boy oh yeah uh, uh, well you never know what might happen i mean the last time we had a you know filmed a series in vegas what happened? We got Mythbusters out of it. We did. So we did. That's a good point. Yeah, we, I don't think we're getting Mythbusters again, but uh, unfortunately not. Yeah, you know. no. but you never know what might happen this time. I mean, we got we got drunk. We went out, took it. Somebody stole one of my fire extinguishers from my pits. Thought we'd duct tape it to a skateboard, smash the end off with the mauler mallet, and uh, <laughs> that reminds me of this urban myth and. Hey, that'd be a great thing to, you know, that became the pilot episode with the with the Jato car. Yeah. So that that's yeah. how you know we got drunk in the desert in Vegas. All right, I'll I'll go buy a skateboard. It'll be fine. 
Well, you never know who might have one there. I mean, Derek usually has one there. I think it was Derek's skateboard. Uh, Derek, Derek doesn't fraternize with the with the scrubs anymore. He stays over on his side with the with the judging area with his own, with his own special star cart, and he doesn't uh, come over and see us anymore. So uh, there'll be somebody probably probably Will Bales or yeah, one of the Bales yeah. crew will have something like that. So um, worst case, I've got a bunch of wheels and some bearings. We can <laughs> make your own skateboard. I mean, uh, one, uh, John Hoffman, the, the late, alas, John Hoffman had that uh, lovely cardboard box racer, right? That was really cool. Um, I never got to go in it, but uh, it was very cool. Just a bunch of people, just see this cardboard box. I turned up to filming, and this cardboard box is whizzing past me, and it's got Don Hudson sat in it going, get out of the way! And as he comes <laughs> boom, past me, I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm just wheeling Fox back to the arena and going, what is this? <laughs> 23 years, I've only had maybe three or four teams actually get angry or, or aggressive in any way towards me. And, you know, and that's usually just a lot of the time it's just stress or sometimes just personal issues because they're assholes. It's um, almost, it, it, you know, it's, it's a very stressful environment, particularly yeah. as it's becoming more and more uh, professional. Uh, yeah, and there's big a lot money more behind it, yeah. Yeah, there's more money. So like last year, we had a lot of money in from from our sponsor, and um, it was very clear that we had to we had to perform particularly well. And we we met all of our minimum expectations last year, but uh, the hell, like the hell, it would play with my mind just just trying to get ready for it. So you, we would finish at say uh, midnight ish. Um, you, between 10 and 11 was a good night on a usual night. It's more like 11, 12 by the time you get back to the hotel. Um, I would probably then sleep for about two or three hours. Then my phone would buzz with the next day's filming schedule. And in there would be who we're fighting. And then I'd be lying in bed until six o'clock in the morning when my wife got up to be a, to teach because she was she's a teacher and she has to teach remotely last year. Um, <laughs> So I just lie there going, what do I do about Witch Doctor? And come up with this stupid plan that didn't quite work, but nearly worked. Um, but um, yeah, so like two weeks of existing on um, three hours sleep. Uh, by the time we got to towards the end of the tournament, my nerves were completely frayed. And I was like, huh. And every little thing that went wrong really, really gripes on you. So um, I think it's 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 a lot more intense now than it used to be. Yeah. So this year I'm just going to, I'm just going to get drunk every night and I'm going to sleep until morning and uh, I'm going to let somebody else deal with all of the stress. Now have one of your teammates get the schedule sent to them each day to worry about, or just turn your phone. Uh, off. I'm just going to turn my phone off. I think blackout drunk is going to be the, uh, the way forward. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say quite that far. Cause you know, don't drink and operate robots kids. It's, uh, in there, done that. It's not good. Um, yeah, done that. Um, yeah. Those those meetings you have at the pub. Um, you know, the ones in in Derby. You know, we had like the suicidal tendencies team racing the go ped and trying to play chicken with the cop car. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, we, no, Arthur Chilcup bringing a big jet engine to to, to fire up. You know, with a, like a two foot across jet engine plenum. And, uh, I love Arthur. Arthur's one of the most underrated, misunderstood individuals in the sport. Um, I wouldn't say he's misunderstood, he's, but he's lovable. He's, he's a wonderful, and he's a, yeah. Um, a lot of the casual fans still, still to this day go, well, the Mortis guys were all assholes. I was like, mm, no, they weren't. No, they Arthur, really Arthur was... Because every, every time... No, Arthur was amazing. Uh, yeah. He's one, of, he's one of my favorite people. Um, He's one of those one of those people that whenever he comments on anything that I post on like Facebook or anything, uh, I'm always like, oh, Arthur said something, and I, he's always like, oh, go and read it immediately. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, Arthur, I remember meeting him in Brighton Model Fair for the very first time because um, I hadn't got to meet him at Robot Wars, and he talked me through Mortis's battery system because they were the first people to run Nikats, uh, yeah, like right. years ahead of the game. Everybody else. Like, Everybody else, for those you don't know, we all ran lead acid batteries, basically gel cells, which are big, like yep. you get on a motorbike normally. And uh, yep. yeah. 
big things that you know big bricks that weigh like 20 ish pounds and uh yeah ridiculous he told me through his battery system and he goes yeah we run this 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 and this and uh i was like that's that must cost a fortune and he goes well it, it would if we bought it i was like oh we showing off he was like, he's like no okay here's my contact here's his so and so at the at sanyo tell him what i sent you and tell him what you want um and and he'll either give you a discount or he'll send you some and he sent me some he sent me a box of like enough batteries to do like four four full packs and it all came from arthur going no here you go contact him mm -hmm. and um ever since then i've loved him and he's been fantastic and um very competitive as a team they were very very competitive only ever wanted to win um but they did do very well you know yeah. people forget that you know they did battle bots and they did they did win a rumble they came home with a giant nut um and they were almost always top 16 i think up until the robot wars cutoff point where they weren't allowing robot wars teams to go yeah it was it was they they developed and they developed well they were one of the first to use brushless motors as well um, uh, yeah yeah and that's now what everybody seems to be using those so yeah <laughs> that, that custom controller that one showed me it was you know that sort of thing people just don't get how big a change it is now then to now and you know i was yeah. using ringer switches and hard cheese from a 1950s uh, telephone exchange the actual ringer switches that used to press together that's what we used as our speed controller <laughs> they're pushed together by solenoids uh not solenoids servos the servers would just push the contacts and that was it that was that was very similar to how we did our first robot we had uh, a set of micro switches in fact just like this i'm building an arcade thing at the minute hang on so we had there's four four micro switches that turn on that were turning on relays so as this, we'd have a servo pushing it forwards and backwards and then a servo that would click it left and right and you, whichever way it, it turned, it, that turned on that micro switch, which turned on that rel uh, relay, which turned the motors. So, uh, yeah, old school technology <laughs> that people don't really realize. It's like, if uh, you couldn't, I haven't got one up here, have I? Uh, a VESC controller. A VESC controller can do brushed and brushless. Um, and it can also g give you sort of encoder inputs and whole effect sensor inputs and stuff like that. So it can read where your motor is and stuff. And that kind of technology, and it's like this big. In fact, I've got some broken ones. I'm sure I do. There. That with a bunch of server with a bunch of relays versus that, mm -hmm. that tiny little thing full of electronics. It, the difference is incredible. And of course, the one the the VESC is you know fully controllable, you know uh, graduated controlled speed mm -hmm. everything. Whereas the thing was just on off on off full, yeah, full all or nothing. You'd, you'd almost always miss the point where you were trying to turn to because it'd be you have to to, 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 to tap it all the way to get all the way around. I I um, used double tank, so it was. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, it was I've always done single stick. Uh, we blew our uh, actually blew one of our controls once on it and um because of that, i still managed to keep the match going and and, and win against the uh, edge hogger yeah. debenham and then the very next we pulled out and uh chaos 2 took our place and that's the match that dominator went straight through a bottle on i'm like i yeah, remember glad that we pulled out glad we pulled out of that one now i remember that so, having to clear the arena and uh yeah straight through the lex and straight <laughs> through the bottle i had to i had to me and dave melton they're poking it with the with my uh eight foot crowbar make sure it hadn't frosted up and uh, sealed itself again to depressurize yeah, it it was it was absolutely incredible i remember just the the sound of it the shot absolutely pinpoint perfect shot with no lidar helping it just a, just a swing and, <laughs> and yeah were you in the room at that time, or were you in with the ant weights? Because I know you were running the ant weights at that event. I was in the room because we were doing uh, at like the half halfway point. We were bringing the arena in and doing stuff in the corner by by all the kids, mm -hmm. and we were waiting to go in. And it was like it was the last match. It wasn't I think the next fought. fight. Yeah, if it wasn't the last fight, it was the fight before last. And 
because of what happened, it all got stopped and like that last fight got pushed to the next show. Um, yeah, I remember that fairly vividly. I remember talking about it for about two or three days afterwards going, oh, you should have seen it. It went straight through and straight in. And, and then the big incredible. cloud and then, yeah. So, yeah. Feel, it, you, you just don't incredible. get that sort of thing these days. Absolutely incredible. Ah, oh, the memories, eh? The closest we got was um, Jason from we had a, a guy called uh, Jason who did Thor. He did the rebuild of Can Opener, and yeah. he caught hold of uh, of a robot that has a CO two bottle across the front of the robot, and he caught hold of it and he went through the uh, four mil Hardox armor and uh, pinched the cylinder at both ends, Ooh. and he, he snapped the um, the valve off one end and punctured a hole in the other, and it just <laughs> CO two everywhere. It was incredible. Wow. And then he couldn't get out. <laughs> if you have one enduring memory now from the last 20 odd years of, of thing, one one high point for you, what what was it? Um probably uh we took the foxy looking foxic to its first ever event. Um, we, you know, we'd done Robot Wars, but nobody had seen it yet, and we took it to an event, and um, it we went into the arena, and everyone was like, "That looks different from how I remember it," which obviously it did, and it dominated the fight. It, it did, it, it flipped people, and it, it, it was amazing. It just completely dominated the fight, and then there was a queue of people for the pit tours that they did in the the live event, where mm -hmm. the queue for us went all the way down the pits and around the corner. People just wanted to come take pictures and stuff like that. And that was the first time that I felt like I was a real builder, despite the fact that that was like 20 years after I'd first started. But that was the first time that I'd been in an arena. People knew my name and people cheered when I won and um, then waited for probably 20 minutes or so just to get a photo and a signature and stuff like that that was the moment that where i felt like i'd i finally reached the level that everybody else had reached but um other than that maybe winning my first uh <laughs> winning my first pog on battlebots um <laughs> in a one-on-one -on -one fight we've got a couple from rumbles and stuff but uh yeah um that was pretty special and so you're hoping obviously to win go all the way and i think uh we're all going to be supporting you as you as you go out and uh as it should go out uh, around the time you start filming and uh fantastic we hope it's gonna go well it'll do you'll do amazing which of course I hope so. you will do because you know <laughs> you started off trying to beat the best and then you know <laughs> I just wonder, you know, I mean, there was no way that we could have got that bot down to uh, to middleweight level. Um, it would have to have been a lot smaller. But, I, you know, I do wonder what would have happened if we'd got it into that middleweight rumble. Because as, as, as far as my early bots go, that was by far the best that, uh, that Toxin. So uh, it probably would have broken down because we had radio signal issues for a little bit. But it was fairly reliable, wasn't it? You know? Everybody had radio signal issues. That's that's why we died in, the, in those <laughs> matches because you know our radio signal. We went straight to failsafe. We were in failsafe most of that match. <laughs> yeah, those those days, man. I mean, I don't miss. I do not miss having to pick uh, three or four different crystal channels and hoping that nobody else had them. And then you turn up to an event and everybody had the same frequency as you. It's like, God. Those those spread spectrum things was yeah, yeah. The way the way that we got around it in uh, series seven, which is you know, it's it's long enough ago for people to sort of not get uh, any back chat from it. Uh, we actually we ran thirty five megahertz. Everybody else was running forty, and um, it was the only way that we could get a clean signal to the robot. So uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> so we we technically cheated. <laughs> Yeah, because thirty fives and air only frequency rose forty years ground in in the UK. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, uh, most toys people yeah. get are 27s, so or 49. Is it 49 yeah. still in the UK? No, it's only 27, I think. I know, and uh, I know, I know, forty nine is usable here in the states as a for toys, and and twenty seven, and then you've got seventy and seventy five. But yeah, forty nine is used for some. I couldn't remember if it was used in the UK or not. It's been such a long time. I I I done it's got acclimatized. <laughs> not so acclimatized. I can still hear that Liverpool in your accent. Of oh, the Scouts. Well, you little you bit of scout. You can take the boy out, out of Liverpool, but you can't take Liverpool out of the boy. <laughs> so, all right. Well, again, good luck at that filming and uh, have a safe flight out there and watch out for the COVID and uh, be safe. Have a great battle and uh, thank you very much for your time, Craig. Thank you very much, man. I'd like to thank my friend Craig Danby for joining me and discussing the past 20 years of robot combat history from his perspective. Next time, we will have BattleBots Executive Vice President and Head Referee John Ramar joining me to discuss uh, his view of robot combat from arena side as the Head Referee for the last 22 years. Uh, he'll be joining me from BattleBots Filming itself. If you like this episode, please hit like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, feedback or questions for John, please leave them in the comments down below. Thank you. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>